The next afternoon, as soon as Mrs. Silver had gone to work, Mr. Hoppy lifted the tortoise up from her balcony and carried it inside. All he had to do now was to find one that was just a shade smaller, so that it would just go through the door of the little house. He chose one and lowered it down with his tortoise catcher. Then, still gripping the tortoise, he tested it to see if it would go through the door. It wouldn't. He chose another. Again, he tested it. This one went through nicely. Good. He placed the tortoise in the middle of the balcony beside a nice piece of lettuce and went inside to wait, await Mrs. Silver's homecoming. That evening, Mr. Hoppy was watering his plants on the balcony when suddenly he heard Mrs. Silver's shout from below, shrill with excitement. Mr. Hoppy, Mr. Hoppy, where are you? She was shouting. Just look at this. Mr. Hoppy popped his head over the railing and said, What's up? Oh, Mr. Hoppy, it's worked, she was crying. Your magic words have worked again on Alfie. He can now get through the door of his little house. It's a miracle. Can I come down and look? Mr. Hoppy shouted back. Come down at once, my dear man, Mrs. Silver answered. Come down and see the wonders you have worked upon my darling Alfie. Mr. Hoppy turned and ran from the balcony into the living room, jumped on tiptoe like a ballet dancer between the sea of tortoises that covered the floor. He flung open his front door and flew down the stairs two at a time with the love songs of a thousand cupids ringing in his ears. This is it, he whispered to himself under his breath. The greatest moment of my life is coming up now. I mustn't bish it. I mustn't bosh it. I must keep very calm. When he was three quarters way down the stairs, he caught sight of Mrs. Silver already standing at the door, waiting to welcome him with a huge smile on her face. She flung her arms around him and cried out, You really are the most wonderful man I have ever met. You can do anything. Come in at once and let me make you a cup of tea. That's the very least you deserve. Seated in a comfortable armchair, Mrs. Silver's parlour, sipping his tea, Mr. Hoppy was all over a Twitter. He looked at the lovely lady sitting opposite him and smiled at her. She smiled right back at him. That smile of hers, so warm and friendly, suddenly gave him the courage he needed, and he said, Mrs. Silver, please will you marry me? Why, Mr. Hoppy, she cried. I didn't think you'd ever get around to asking me. Of course I'll marry you. Mr. Hoppy got rid of his teacup, and the two of them stood up and embraced warmly in the middle of the room. It's all due to Alfie, Mrs. Silver said, slightly breathless. Good old Alfie, Mr. Hoppy said. We'll keep him forever. The next afternoon, Mr. Hoppy took all of his other tortoises back to the pet shops and said they could have them for nothing. Then he cleaned up his living room, leaving not a leaf of cabbage, nor a trace of tortoise. A few weeks later, Mrs. Silver became Mrs. Hoppy, and the two of them lived very happily ever after. P.S. I expect you're wondering what happened to little Alfie, the first of them all. Well, he was bought a week later from one of the pet shops by a small girl called Robertus, Roberta Squibb, and he settled down in Roberta's garden. Every day she fed him lettuce and tomato slices and crispy celery, and in the winters he hibernated in a box of dried leaves in the tool shed. That was a long time ago. Roberta has grown up now and is married and has two children of her own. She lives in another house, but Alfie is still with her, still the much-loved family pet, and Roberta reckons that by now he must be about 30 years old. It has taken him all that time to grow twice his size he was when Mrs. Silver had him, but he made it in the end. The end.